right now we want to go ahead and bring in Patrick Watson, superintendent for the Bloomfield Hills School District. Thank you so much, superintendent, for being with us. Good morning, and I appreciate it. Hope everyone's doing well. So I guess the question on everyone's mind, are you ready? <laughs> is, is that a trick question or what? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think we're ready. Uh, we had a board meeting last night that lasted for about six hours. And we approved the phase in plan to bring students back for face-to-face -face learning. Uh, we have about 70% of our community that wants to come back and 30% that have signed up to be in our virtual school. So when you're making those decisions, is it going to be all of them that are going to be given the opportunity or all the students in all you know uh, grade levels are going to be given the opportunity to come back to the classroom or will high school students be completely remote? So it's an opportunity for students to come back K through 12. And so we're looking to phase in um, our special education students, then kindergarten, elementary, middle and high school. But we're doing something really unique that no one around us is really doing, uh, especially at the high school level. Uh, with our hybrid program, the students will be able to remote in. So even if it's a day you're supposed to be at home, as opposed to in the building under the hybrid plan, you can remote into the building or into your classroom virtually. So this does a couple things. One, for a student that may not feel comfortable coming in or feels they feel sick that day, they're able to remote in and still get instruction. Instead of a typical hybrid AB rotation where you're only able to see your teacher two days of the week, you're now able to see your teacher four days of the week. And it really gives the kids the ultimate flexibility, right? So if my day to come in the building is Monday and Tuesday and I don't feel well, or I just can't make it in that day, I still can remote in, be with my classmates, be with the teacher and be part of the class. And then on Thursday and Friday, if those are my days to be at home under a typical hybrid model, it would all be asynchronous. It wouldn't be any live interaction. But because we're allowing our students to remote in, they now are part of the class on Thursday and Friday as well. So we're really excited about that and it's something that's really unique to Bloomfield Hills. I'm thinking about this. What is it going to be like to try to keep track of the attendance? It's going to be an adventure. It was going to be an adventure uh, either way. So we're working with our teachers on the best way to track attendance because you're right. You need to take attendance for those that are live in front of you and attendance for those that are going to be home as well. So we're working on those procedures and protocols uh, right now. So when the time is right and we're back, we can hit the ground running. Superintendent Watson, teachers have been working around the clock all summer long, formulating their lesson plans, changing them with their partnering teachers and so on. As plans have changed and new information has come, come in and the old information has been modified. And a lot of that focus has been on how do you keep the classroom interactive and, and personal for these students so that they are able to tailor their learning to the subject matter and learn effectively whether they're in the classroom or out. How much of an emphasis have have your team at the highest levels at Bloomfield Hill Schools all the way down to the students, the teachers, and the families put those, put those interests to heart in planning for the 2020 school year? Right, that's been a big part of our planning. And we're really focused on blended learning. Uh, students don't want to sit there and have a lecture the whole time. We're also planning on making sure we build time so the students can collaborate. Is it going to look and feel different than a traditional school year? Absolutely. Um, but the most part, we're using Zoom as a platform, and that allows us to have the various breakout rooms so that the students can go work, collaborate, either with them, you know, within a small group or a medium-sized group, and the teacher can kind of pop in and out, and that's going to be a big part of what we're doing this year. We want to build that type of our sense of community with our students, whether we're in person or virtual, and that's why we felt it was so important to remote in. We didn't want those students on an AB rotation that are at home for the day just to be by themselves trying to do work. This way, they're still remoting in. They're still part of the classroom. They can hear the conversation of their peers. And then when it's time within Zoom, they have those breakout rooms. Whether you're at home or you're in person, you're still part of those conversations. You're still part of that group. So you're really doubling up the amount of interaction that a student would get with the teacher and their classmates compared to a typical, uh, typical hybrid schedule. Everyone having to think outside the box right now to make all of this happen. And it seems like you have been able to try to address all these different facets. 
the one thing we're seeing right now, the outbreaks that are being reported in schools across the state as they are starting to reopen, are you worried about that? And what plan does your district have in place if that does happen? Right, so we have about 28, 28 different flow charts for protocols depending on what happens. And so we've spent time talking to schools in Louisiana, Mississippi, in Tennessee that have actually gone back live, uh, actually for 12 days now, and really leaned on them for their best practices. We've also had colleagues we've talked to in Japan, Denmark, and South Korea, who have phased in, you know, bringing groups back one at a time or in small clusters. Really make sure that, A, your protocols are working, and really to see kind of what's gone on. Um, so we know that, you know, there's the possibility of a student coming to school with COVID. And then depending on the scenario, we're not only capable, but we're willing to deal with what that means. And a big part of that is contact tracing. Right now we're training six different people in our school district uh, that can help with contact tracing. We know the county is going to do it as well, but we know we need to move really fast to make sure that we're able to identify anyone that's been around that student or potentially that teacher for 15 minutes or longer uh, within six feet as part of the contact tracing protocols we have in place. I'm trying to think about how has this been for you and your team to try to come up with all these scenarios? You said you have like all these flow charts. Is it, do you have like a war room that you're working out of? We don't because we're social distancing. So it's kind of like Bill Murray and Groundhog's Day. It's like we're living the same day over and over and over. And then you know where the pitfalls are, you know where the mistakes are, you know where the next challenge is going to be. So each day you progress a little bit further and so finally you get to the point where you have a plan that you can move forward. Another thing that we're doing is we're putting large tents uh, for the most part 40 feet by 60 feet in all of our buildings so that teachers are able to take their classrooms outside as much as possible. That allows them to social distance a little bit more. It allows the students to be outside, get fresh air, and it also allows them to spread out a little bit further than six feet um, when available depending on how many classes will be outside. And we all know that if it's too hot outside or if there's minimal rain, uh, students typically don't want to sit outside um, and do work at that time. But by having the tent, it provides a natural shelter for our students. And I know our teachers are outside, excited about being able to take their classes outside as much as possible in the fall this year. Patrick Watson with a superintendent at the Bloomfield Hills School District. And circling back to so, some issues with the passage of COVID-19, uh, through schools throughout the country. Locally, uh, just yesterday, the West Bloomfield School District, one of your neighboring school districts, received 180 N95 masks through the Oakland County Emergency Operations Center. Are there any discussions between your, your team at Bloomfield Hills Schools and Oakland County about receiving more of that critical PPE for your educators, for your most vulnerable student population as you're approaching bringing students back into the classroom? There has been, and we've been really fortunate. Uh, we were able, through some contacts we have, to get PPE quite a while ago. So when you talk about the different type of masks, we were able to get the KN95. We were able to get the two different types of N95 masks. So you have the N9, N95 that's foldable, foldable, and then the N95 that's kind of a hard shell. And we're also going with something called the Badger Shield, um, which is something that's very new. The University of Wisconsin designed it. So we've ordered quite a bit of those, which is additional protection. And then we also have a portable um, barrier for the teachers in the classroom so that if they need to move closer to a student or a student needs to come closer to the desk, it kind of creates an additional barrier for the teachers. So we've included those as well. So we're confident we have the PPE that we need to start school and we're ready to accommodate whether it's a student need or a staff need throughout the year. We are speaking with Patrick Watson, the superintendent for the Bloomfield Hills School District. I know that uh, your district just recently hired a health and wellness director. Is that a new position and what is that role going to be? So definitely a new position. You know, we're educators. Our background is not in science. Our background is not in, you know, dealing with, you know, what a hospital would deal with or somebody that has a degree in public health. So our health and wellness director, uh, Leonard Sanford Jr., he's worked for IHA in Ann Arbor, he's worked for Trinity Health, 
He brings that healthcare background. He's in charge of our COVID-19 response team. So he's working with different stakeholders, including numerous doctors, some of which are infectious disease specialists and epidemiologists on best practices and protocols when it comes to returning to school. Um, we felt that since this really is in our wheelhouse as a school district and we want to provide the absolute safest environment possible, that we needed someone that could head this up, that understands exactly what's going on. And his only job is to respond to COVID-19 and help us plan around that. That's it. And we were fortunate. He's been here two weeks. He'll probably tell you, based on the amount of work, it feels like he's been here two years. Uh, he's done a great job. Uh, the research and science that he brings to the table is second to none. And it's really helped us plan forward what we feel is the safest way to bring our students back. So such an asset to have someone like him on your team. How are you planning to handle cleaning and the cleaning protocols? What's that going to look like? So we have three stages of cleaning. Um, for those of you that want to review all of them, it's on bloomfield.org on our district website. Um, everything's EPA certified. And we know that those high touch points that are frequently used are going to be some of the main pro or the main cleaning spots we need to do. Uh, so we're confident that with our work with ViroClean, that we'll be able to meet the standards needed to keep the buildings clean and safe for students and staff during the day. Okay, I haven't been able to buy a can of Lysol spray <laughs> and I don't know how many months. I just used the uh, last bit here at the uh, station this morning. Uh, are you guys able to get the supplies that you need right now? Uh, believe it or not, we are. Our, our staff really were thinking forward so in March and April, they started placing large orders for whether it was Clorox wipes or other disinfectants to make sure we'd have them on hand. Then, you know, like you said, you can't get it. You read the story, Clorox wipes are out until January of 2021. Uh, we're sitting on quite a bit of cleaning products that we were able to get, including the hand sanitizer that's described in the governor's return to learn plan. So we're feeling, you know, cautiously optimistic. You never know how quick you'll go through things, but. You know, I'm proud of my team that they had the foresight when this first hit to start ordering supplies early, knowing that we would most likely need them in the fall. And so we're in really good shape when it comes to cleaning supplies and, like I said, PPE. Patrick Watson with the superintendent of Bloomfield Hill Schools with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Superintendent Watson, so much of the experience of being a, a, a kid or a teen in school, it's the social aspects of school. You're participating in sports, participating in clubs. Uh, we've seen the MHSAA postpone the high school football and, and, and middle school football seasons until the spring. Other sports decisions are expected to come as soon as today. Uh, in, ter in Bloomfield Hills, in terms of other clubs and, and sports and so on, what, what is going on there? Are those going to continue on this fall, or are those being postponed by the school district in an abundance of caution? We really want to be able to run our extracurriculars with the expectation that they meet They'll need to meet the same safety standards we have for students in the building. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, by us putting these tents, 40 by 60, um, a little bit larger at the high school, 40 by 80, you can have some of those things that you typically would do outside, I'm sorry, inside, outside, and still social distance. You know, have a mask on, be, be six feet apart. So we're excited to continue to offer as many of those opportunities as possible. Um, some of them obviously will need to be done via you know, Google Meets, WebEx, or Zoom. Um, but the students are really interested in being actively involved, and so we'll try to make sure that happens in the safest way possible. So one of the, thing, the things that we have seen mm -hmm. at uh, other schools, especially on college campuses, kids are kids. And you're going through all this work and all these efforts to put these policies and procedures in place, but at the end of the day, if they don't follow them, it does no good. How are you going to try to enforce the mask wearing and the socially distance? Well, we'll look at them separately. Social distancing, I think, will be easier the older the kids are because they understand. It will be a little more difficult for the younger children. Um, going K through eight, um, our hybrid model will be half days. So you're looking at students wearing a mask for less than three hours, which is much more tolerable than a six or seven hour shift. At the high school, I don't expect any issues. Uh, students are really anxious to get back to school. Uh, they're excited to have the opportunity to go back, even if it means wearing a mask. 
and then it becomes the new normal. You adjust it. You adjust to it. You think of your first day, your freshman year in a high school, and you walk in the building, and you're so nervous. A month later, you've adapted, you've adjusted, and it starts to become old hat, and by the time you're a senior, it's just what you do. I feel it's going to be the same way with wearing a mask. I know for me personally, it felt a little awkward at first. As I adjusted to it, it became no big deal. It's just what we do. We are talking with Patrick Watson. He's the superintendent of the Bloomfield Hill School District. You have such a wide range of diverse students within your district. What conversation is being had to try to make sure you're addressing the, the, the various backgrounds to make sure all the kids are getting what they need out of this upcoming academic year? So we're really trying to break it down by different categories. So preschool, K through five, six through eight, nine through 12, special education. And so that when we give our report like we did last night, where we're planning, we're really focused on those different categories and then what's going to be best for those different sets of students. It's not one size fits all. Again, we're one of the few school districts that has a hybrid model K through eight and then a different hybrid model, nine through 12, because we felt that our students in different age groups needed something different. And so we were able to, like I said, work it out and come up with what we feel is a tremendous plan um, that allows flexibility for students, allows some flexibility for parents, and it's incredibly safe. You know, you can literally be, you know, a middle school or a high school student and show up on, you know, your day in the hybrid model to be in class, and there should be 13 kids. You might only have five that day, because everyone else is remoted in because they didn't feel well or they decided to stay home that day. Um, it also helps us encourage parents in that age group that if your son or daughter just feels a little ill, keep them home. They're not going to miss out. They still remote in. They still see their classmates. They still can hear the teacher and know what the lesson is going to be that day. Such a creative plan that you have uh, come up with. Before we let you go, just a couple more minutes here. Anything that we didn't touch on? Although I feel like we've been peppering you with questions left and right, but anything maybe we didn't touch on that you want uh, people to know? Yeah, I think one thing that makes Bloomfield Hills unique is that we own and operate our own farm and nature center. So we're working on how we can best use those assets to get our students out and do some real you know, hands-on learning in real time in spaces that are outdoors because we know that provides, you know, additional safety measures. So we're excited to continue vetting those opportunities and then sharing them with the community so that we can get the students either at the farm or at the nature center and learning outside. Uh, Patrick, Patrick Watson, superintendent at Bloomfield Hill Schools, just another question for you. Uh, we haven't spoken to, we spoke to you just before the August primary elections, the result of that election, your bond, the Bloomfield Hill Schools bond issue had passed with 72% uh, in favor of it. So that has passed through. What will those bond dollars be used for and when can people in Bloomfield Hill Schools family begin to see those changes be put in place? Well, there'll be minor changes right away. You talk about what an exciting time in the middle of all this, it's going to allow us to right size the school district and go back to a K through five, six through eight, and nine through 12 configuration. Um, for our special education students, um, they'll have an experience that's second to none nationally. Um, we'll be able to put therapy rooms and sensory rooms in our buildings. We'll at the farm have equine therapy for our students, which will be one of the few school districts in the nation that's able to do that. So there's really upgrades at over 14 different sites in the district. We're going to build a 15,000 square foot STEM center uh, that will be used by all the district students. So it really is a great step. It was a, a huge ask of the community and they came out and supported it, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic. And I couldn't be more thankful for our community for passing that type of bond uh, with everything that's going on. Do you think the pandemic kind of helped in a way because for all of these parents having their kids at home and the parents were then forced to try to educate the kids they understand more about what teachers are doing for their kids so do you think it kind of helped you get this extra money you know I, there could be a lot of reasons i'm not sure I, I think the community really understood that the buildings really needed to be updated that our technology needed to be updated and we really need to move to 
21st century learning and really kind of taking a huge leap in that direction and making it more experiential, more hands-on for our students. So I couldn't be happier for the support. There could be a lot of you know factors why it happened and why the vote was yes. I'm just grateful that the vote was yes and we can start doing additional great things for all of our students. Well, we are so happy to uh, have you on the Oakland County Megacast. As always, you're a wealth of knowledge and we appreciate it. I will say I hope this pandemic is over in the wintertime because I'm looking forward to going out to the farm and going sledding. It's my favorite hill. Absolutely. And if things are semi back to normal, uh, we'll have our sled race like we had last year where I came in second. So I'm looking to take an additional step forward if possible this winter and I'll take that uh, number one spot and that trophy home. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Uh, Patrick Watson, Superintendent, Bluefield Hill School District, thank you so much for your time. We always appreciate it.